Picture this. The most famous photographer in the history of the United States dies penniless and is buried under a mislabeled headstone. How did this all develop? Keep watching to find out. Hi, I'm Aaron Killian for Dead, White, and Blue, the YouTube series that chronicles the final chapter and final resting places of famous dead Americans. Today, we focus in on the death and gravesite of famed Civil War photographer Matthew Brady. Now, let's explore what made Matthew Brady special before he passed away. From humble beginnings in an Irish immigrant family, Matthew Brady became a photographic entrepreneur and pioneer in the earliest days of the medium. His images won first place at the world's first international photographic competition during the 1851 London World's Fair. He became the most famous photographer in the United States as a result, and his studios in New York and DC were known across the country. He and the photographers he employed are best remembered for amassing a photographic chronicle of the American Civil War and a library of famous American faces. Matthew Brady also looked a lot like movie star Adam Driver. All right. Time to get six feet deep on Matthew Brady. Brady died at 5.15 p.m. on January 15, 1896, in the charity ward of Presbyterian Hospital in New York City. He was 73 years old. Due to poor money management, bad business practices, and an inability to sell his expensively produced catalog of Civil War photographs to the United States government, Brady spent his post-war years mired in debt and bankruptcy. He died penniless. He was also lonely since his wife, Julia, predeceased him in 1887. Moreover, a year and a half before he died, Brady, a nearsighted man, was seriously injured by a horse-drawn carriage in a hit-and-run incident. His body never fully recovered. Afterwards, a newspaper reporter said that Brady was, quote, crippled in body with failing eyesight and harassed almost to madness by the stings of poverty. Close quote. Brady's waning days were spent living hand to mouth in New York City. Towards the end, however, his luck seemed poised to turn. He was to be honored with a grand testimonial benefit sponsored by the veterans of the 7th New York Regiment. Booked for Carnegie Hall, the event would feature Brady narrating a projected magic lantern presentation of his Civil War photos. Brady hoped it would relaunch his career and resuscitate his finances, but he died before it could take place. Admitted to Manhattan's Presbyterian Hospital Charity Ward in December of 1895, Brady suffered complications from Bright's disease, namely severe kidney inflammation nephritis, and a subsequent unrelated infection of his salivary glands, parotiditis. Deteriorating over a month-long hospital confinement, he was visited regularly by a friend, William Riley, who was there with him when he died. Soon after, Riley cabled Brady's in-laws that, quote, Brady was conscious, but for two or three days he was unable to speak on account of the swelling in his throat. I don't think he realized he was dying. Close quote. Brady's body was embalmed the day after he died and then transported via train to Washington, D.C., where it would lie beside his wife in her family plot at Congressional Cemetery. Brady's funeral expenses were covered by the same 7th Infantry Regiment veterans who had planned to host the Carnegie Hall benefit in his honor. He was given a nondescript burial on Sunday, January 19, 1896. In the two cities most identified with his work, New York and Washington, the local papers paid Brady glowing tributes. The Washington Star said of him, quote, News of his passing will be received with sorrow by hundreds and hundreds who knew this gentle photographer, whose name is today a household name, all over the United States. The New York Tribune published a letter which said that Brady was, quote, still warmly remembered by many of our old residents as a most talented and enthusiastic artist and as a modest, gentle, generous man. The New York Times sadly observed that Brady died, quote, alone and unnoticed, and that his death was really due to the misfortunes which have befallen him in recent years, close quote. The images Brady left behind serve as his real memorial. As author Robert Wilson has written, they're truly 
The Portrait of a Nation. The vast majority of them are now held by the Library of Congress and National Archives, and they live on in countless documentaries, history books, and nerdy YouTube videos like ours. Brady also has a street in Tulsa, Oklahoma named after him, and the photos of Abraham Lincoln, which his studio produced, adorn the modern-day penny and $5 bill. Brady had no children and no estate to leave behind. His sole remaining possession of worth was a gold ring with a ruby-like stone which had been given to him by the Prince of Wales. No, not that Prince of Wales, the other Prince of Wales. Right. Prince Edward Albert visited the United States in 1860, the first member of the British royal family to do so, and he gifted the ring to Brady after a photo sitting. The ring would pass to Brady's nephew before ultimately being destroyed in the fires of Mount Doom. Now, let's go see where he's buried. Matthew Brady is buried in Section 3, Range 72, Space 120A. Let's go find him. Here he is. Let's have a discussion of grave importance, shall we? Matthew Brady's wife, Julia, came from a well-to-do family that lived in the area. Since Brady died a pauper, he was buried in his wife's family plot. His first headstone was a simple affair, paid for by the veterans of the 7th New York. It is labeled simply Matthew B. Brady, along with his year of birth and death. About the inscription, Brady spelled his first name Matthew with only a single T, and he claimed never to know what the B in his middle initial stood for. Also, the 1822 birth year was only a best guess. The record keeping had been so poor that Brady grew up knowing only that he had been born sometime between 1822 and 1824. It seems almost fitting, then, that the stone carver mislabeled his death year on the grave. Brady actually died in 1896, not 1895. But you get what you pay for, I suppose. Eventually, the mislabeling would be corrected in 1988, when a group of admirers from Ohio purchased a new headstone for Brady. It's larger and placed directly opposite the original stone. It features the corrected death year and includes images of Civil War appropriate headwear, along with an inscription which reads, renowned photographer of the Civil War. Brady admirers who visit the grave site are known to leave mementos behind, such as colorful camera keychains, rolls of film, and, of course, pennies which featured the iconic profile image of Abraham Lincoln, which was captured in Brady's studio. If you like what you saw today, remember to like, subscribe, and share this video. If you want to learn more about Historic America, go to www.historicamerica.org. There, you can support us on Patreon, and you can listen to the newest episode of our podcast, A Place in Time, the latest episode of which deals with none other than Matthew Brady. Also, if you want to learn more about the information we covered in this episode, all you got to do is go down to the description below. In the meantime, I'm Aaron Killian for Historic America and Dead, White, and Blue. We'll see you in the cemetery.